Hey guys, I'm finally done testing running Arrow with Ignites, well, lighting version Ignites. So I wanted to make a build guide video, but I do not recommend this build. There is a slightly different version of this, uh, not using lighting damage and using soft nurture bomb, which may work much better and you could still use the flamethrower trap for single target, which would be probably the best. I'm gonna quickly talk about pros and cons, what I have managed to do with this build, and then if you still are interested in doing this build, I'm gonna talk about a well, more detailed explanation about the build. As always, timestamps and other info will be in video description. So starting off, this is a pure lighting based attack build using Stormfire, and Stormfire allows you to ignite with your lighting damage. I am also triggering Elemental Equilibrium, which increases my ignite damage. And generally this build is really not expensive. I only paid 80 hairs for 2 good jewels and uh, 6 link uh, shadow stitch body armor, which costed like 1 exalt for the right colors. And I'm currently level 87. By the way, I haven't done Uber Lab. There's nothing too great from the Uber Lab for this build. Now, map clear does seem okay, even uh, tier 15 maps. It's definitely not amazing, but once you start doing incursions in like tier 15, tier 16 maps, I was consistently failing them. I simply do not have enough damage. Also, I did attempt uh, Shaper's Guidance, Phoenix, Chimera and Minotaur. Chimera is just cancer. I did manage to kill Phoenix, but for Minotaur I had to swap to my Trapper to finish it off. Also, I did attempt uh, tier 16 Val Temple, but I also had to swap to my Trapper to finish it off. So talking about the numbers, with Elemental Overload, with Elemental Equilibrium triggered, with 8 stacks of uh, Scorching Ray, against 20% Shock Guardians or Shaper, with Soul Catcher Flask on, and Val Burning Arrow, in Path of Building it shows almost 144,000 Ignite DPS, that is for 1 Ignite, and I can stack 2 Ignites, and I also drop Burning Ground, which also does damage over time. But the Burning Ground is not really that great. So now I'm thinking maybe it would even be worth uh, swapping to Pitch Darkness Jewel for some uh, stronger jewels with uh, added lighting damage and other lighting damage to bomb attacks with life. And if I do that, the damage would go to 167,000 per ignite, but it would lose the burning ground damage. And that overall is about 45,000 increase, which is about the same as burning ground. But those jewels are expensive, but you would have more life. So <laughs> under those perfect conditions, you basically have over 300,000 DPS. But without all the perfect conditions, the damage felt really shit. And that also meant that I had to swap my GMP for a swift affliction, which means I I shoot only one arrow and it is very difficult to hit the enemy that I want. So in many cases even against many bosses I was using GMP because simply I would be overwhelmed with the odd face and just not be able to survive. Talking about surviving, another problem. I don't really have leech and even if I had leech I wouldn't be leeching much against single target because this is focusing on the damage over time and not initial hit damage. And for 6 link I am using a cheap version of uh, 6 link body armor which is shadow stitch because it recovers percentage life on kill. And this armor is cheap because it is very easy to obtain it through the corruption chamber. You always get it 6 link but the colors of the body armor may be difficult. Otherwise I would be using elders body armor with uh, percentage life on kill and plus 1 to support jumps. And that's basically my only source of healing while mapping and it is enough. But against single target it is just terrible. That's that's why you see Frostwall triggering so often. Frostwall on castle damage taken is really good. <sighs> so overall, like I said, I would not recommend this build. It is good for map clear, but it's still pretty squishy. There are options and ways to improve the damage and survivability, but those options are expensive, very expensive. And I believe that you should not be required to invest that much just to make the build viable. For that amount invested, I could deal with Shaper's Guardians way easier on the other builds, like my Trapper. But if you still want to make a Burning Arrow build, I will link in the video description my previous build uh, in Best League that I did. But I will also include the modified passive skill tree. But that build may also be more expensive because I am using the timing ring. But that build at least can use like Flamethrower Trap, can use Castle Damage Taken with um, Firestorm and get the Leech. So it is way more defensive, it may not have as good damage, but for clear speed you don't need that much damage. 
and for single target like I said you can use flamethrower trap while on this lightning version build you can't because traps would mess up your elemental equilibrium you could use lightning spire trap but it wouldn't do a lot of damage because you are scaling mostly fire damage and not lighting you are stacking a lot of lighting damage but uh, the most damage comes from ignites and fire <sighs> so yeah now I'll quickly go over my items, um, skills, links and then passive skill tree. So the Tempest buff isn't that expensive, then I'm using the Corrupted Hrimnor Resolve, uh, which gives plus 2 to lighting gems and plus 2 to duration gems. And that means for Herald of Thunder it is plus 4, and for Wrath it is plus 2. And both give flat lighting damage, which increases your ignite damage. Then I'm also using Flame Golem, and having Two flame golems active gives you 70% increased damage. And no, they do not stack. This is because of Leech of Primordial, which I'm gonna talk a bit later. Inside my bow I also have a spell totem linked with Scorching Ray and faster casting. Also Blink Arrow. Then body armor, like I mentioned, uh, Shadow Stitch with the right colors. And I do have Val, Burning Arrow linked with either Lighting Damage, Burning Damage, Elemental Damage, Combustion and Swift Affliction for a single target and I swap it for GMP for clear speed. Either Lighting Damage support basically doubles my Ignite Damage, while Burning Damage, Elemental Damage of Attacks and Combustion and Swift Affliction also increase the Burning Ground Damage as well. Uh, next for the Amulet, I am using Nagamu Sticky uh, with the Lucky Corruption for Movement Speed. It does give a lot of Fire Damage which increases your Ignite Damage. It may be replaced with a Rare with a lot of Elemental Damage of Attacks and uh, maybe Fire Damage and added Lighting Damage to Attacks, just not Fire and not Physical Damage. Because that would mess up elemental equilibrium. Nagamu Sticky is also a pretty cheap amulet. Then my quiver is also not that expensive, just elemental damage of attacks. And it is piercing uh, implicit quiver. And pierce is really useful, helps a lot with the clear speed. Then obviously stormfire ring which allows your lightning damage to ignite. And also gives uh, elemental damage some resistances, increases the burning damage for each non-shocked enemies you have shocked recently. And just flat lightning damage to attacks against ignited enemies. By the way, for maximum ignite damage you basically need to ignite 3 times. First ignite will be weak, then second ignite will do more damage because uh, there are a lot of uh, things that increase damage against burning enemies. And then the third ignite will override the first weaker ignite. So the two remaining ignites will be the strongest. And my second ring is nothing too special, just life and resistances. Which could definitely be improved but it's not gonna make uh, things that much better. The belt, the Adian Dawn, which is basically a must on this build. Because enemies ignited by an attack burn 35% faster, which is like 35% more ignite damage. However, it does reduce ignite duration, but that is not a problem because it is very easy to reignite enemies. And you do not want to use Ember Wake Rings because Ember Wake Rings increases the ignite duration but reduces the ignite damage per second, which is terrible for clear speed and well for anything because you want to do damage as fast as possible, not as long as possible, since it is so easy to just reapply another ignite. Now, the gloves, <laughs> they don't have to be Blasphemer's Grasp, but Blasphemer's Grasp actually synergizes is pretty well for this, however I do not have enough elder items. Another option would be Thunder Fist if you could uh, get enough dexterity and life or two socket Tom Fist with uh, very strong jewels but that basically means I would have to sacrifice the jewel socket in the passive skill tree and use the into dex conversion jewel or mess around with my equipments to get uh, enough dexterity somewhere else. Also Blasphemer's Grasp not only increases the burning damage with each elder item but it also increases the shock effectiveness with each elder item and shock effectiveness well on this elementalist setup also increases well basically the damage you do. So if you could get elder influenced items like uh, maybe quiver, maybe another ring, maybe boots, then you would increase your damage quite a lot more. Also talking about boots, I got these boots from the temple and uh, well they are really nice, not the best life roll but a lot of movement speed, resistances and very important attack dodge but it could be also spell dodge. In my boots I have cast when damage taken level 2, immortal call level 4, and feeble level 6 and frost wall level 11. And feeble is another thing that could you improve your damage because well I prefer to live than do a bit more damage. And instead of Enfeeble you could use Elemental Weakness, just not Flammability. Well I guess you could use Flammability but you are doing Lighting Damage which then ignites so it kind of makes sense to use Elemental Weakness a bit more, especially if you could get quality. 
And in my gloves I do have face run, I also have orb of storms link with increased critical strike supports which is used only to trigger elemental overload which is still kind of difficult to trigger re reliably against single target. Oh and also increased duration which also helps uh, face run duration. <sighs> and lastly I'm also using soul catcher which improves the wild skill damage. Uh, which also improves the ignite damage from Val Burning Arrow. And Val Burning Arrow also has a bit higher base damage. So for bosses I do use Val Burning Arrow. By the way, for non-ignite Burning Arrow, Val Burning Arrow with GMP may even be able to one-shot bosses. I am actually amazed how much damage I am doing with GMP while Burning Arrow while focusing on damage over time. <sighs> it's over 10 minutes already, so quickly passive skill 3. So elementalist, first I went for beacon of ruin for ignites and shocks. Then I took leech of the primordial and let me explain how it works. So level 19 flame golem does give 20% increased damage from uh, its own buff. And when you have leech of uh, primordial you also get extra golem and each golem gives you 20% damage. So with two golems you already have 40% damage. And if it is flame golem which gives 20% damage from its own buff, then that 20% uh, increased damage buff from the golem gets increased by 50%, not 25% but by 50%. So you are getting 30% increased uh, generic damage from the golem buff. So you combine it and you get uh, two golems uh, which each give 20% and another 30% from the golem buff. So I'm sure you're already confused so you overall get 70% damage. And in path of building it is still not calculated. So that's another hidden secret uh, damage uh, buff, not, not that big, like 10k damage buff. But you would have to maintain your golems alive, which is a difficult task. <sighs> now for the rest of the passive skill tree. I am using sudden ignition here, two pitch darkness jewels here and here. Then just life, 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 damage, 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 burning damage, damage, and that's all. Oh, elemental overall and elemental equilibrium as well. And that's about all. I don't even want to talk about ignites anymore, but actually <laughs> my next build will still be with ignites. I am planning a helicopter build sort of, like a very fast gas speed incinerate because in my pre previous video I did a mistake talking about incinerate uh, being bad clear speed and I want to rectify that. So I will be building a very fast gas speed incinerate uh, with uh, ignite proliferation for clear speed and a flame thrower trap uh, for the single target, but I will be using a slave drive where hand whatever it's called which scales uh, trap throwing speed with uh, cast speed and cast speed increases the flame thrower trap uh, rotation speed so i want to see how fast can i make that flame thrower trap rotate anyway that's it for now don't forget that i left the links in the description oh and if you are still not sub but you are end up watching all of my videos anyway may as well subscribe anyway thank you for watching and see you soon